Hi everyone, I'm going to show you today how to use the whole house steady state simulation and what sort of information you can draw from it in order to help your understanding of um, the sorts of gains that we have around our building and how they impact the internal temperature of your building over an averaged period of time. We have all of these parameters that you can play with around here and they'll all alter the building properties so you can actually see how um, each of these parameters is impacting your building, visualize where the gains might be coming from. If we're going to move, for example, from summer to winter. For this particular case, we're looking at um, summer around Sydney or summer around the Sydney area. So when we move to winter, you'd expect, as you expect, the sun is lower in the sky. It has a lower altitude angle during the winter months or the winter season, as opposed to the summer months. So you can play around with all of these values. We'll have a look at altering the window to wall ratio. And you'll see that alters your simulation up here. And then you'll also notice that your total in your total internal gains, your total solar gains from your window will also increase with your window to wall ratio. Okay, so let's go through each of these individual gains and losses that we have in our building. We have, of course, our internal gains, those from people or from equipment or appliances that you might have within your household. We have our infiltration losses, which are leakiness in your building. So if you have a high outdoor temperature and a lower indoor temperature, you'd expect that any air that leaks into your building is going to leak warm air into your building, which may be unpreferable. It depends on what temperature it is, and we'll investigate that. And then you have your solar gains through your window, your conduction, conduction losses through the window, or conduction gains through the window. This is just an average for the months, so you can see that in the summer months we have conduction losses through the window. That's due to a very high indoor a uh, very high average indoor temperature from the incoming sun. So that means that we have a very unpreferable indoor temperature that is actually losing losing heat via conduction on average um, to the outdoor, to the ambient. We have our conduction convection losses from the roof as well, which is significantly smaller, a little bit smaller due to our higher insulation. Um, you can see the R values up here as well for your roof. So the little subscript R is for your roof, little subscript W is for wall, and WI is for your window. And then you can also see your uh, conduction, conduction losses through the walls too. All right, let's have a look at what would happen with our building if we were to alter the air change rate in our building. So at the moment we have a significantly high infiltration loss in our building in order to net out uh, the gains that we have within our building in these summer months. So if we were to reduce that air change rate, we'd expect that the internal, the average internal temperature would increase within this building. There is no way to lose, to lose as much heat out of your building. So you'll notice that your infiltration losses will decrease, but you'll also notice that your conduction losses will increase. Your conduction convection losses will increase in order to average out and conserve energy within this building over whatever period of time that you're averaging. So let's have a look, investigate that. So we'll decrease our air change rate. And then you have, we've gone from 32 degrees average indoor temperature in whatever this average period is to 42.9, which is extremely unpreferable. That is a horrendous day to have inside your household. So let's investigate if we were to then, if this is the air change rate that we have within our household, and this is the indoor average temperature that we have, what could we possibly do in order to create a more preferable environment within our building? We would first look at our internal gains, or first look at our window to wall ratio, which would be our largest contributor. So you can see that the solar gains here are at almost two kilowatts. So these are the largest contributor and uh, the only other 
next to the internal gains that's actually producing energy within the building. So it's actually increasing the indoor temperature of the building. So amongst these two, we need to control either of these. You may not be able to control internal gains. It depends on whether you already have really efficient appliances or how many people you have occupying your building. But you may be able to control the solar gains within your building. So currently we don't have any shading on this building, but let's have a look at what we can control, and that's our window to wall ratio. So if we reduce this window to wall ratio, what we'd expect is that we have a decrease in the solar gains and that we'd have a decrease of the indoor average temperature. So let's have a look at that. All right, excellent. So we can see that decreasing our window to wall ratio has reduced those solar gains and has reduced our average indoor temperature. Okay, everyone, so you've seen the impact now of actually changing some of these variables, your window to wall ratio and how that impacts the solar gains on your building. Of course, in summer, we, we can see that we've reduced our window to wall ratio to the minimum that we're actually allowed to within the simulation. But what we can see is still we have significant solar gains that are causing an unpreferable temperature within our building. So what we could implement is then a shading strategy of some sort in order to bring our indoor average temperature down even more so and reduce those solar gains at this unpreferable time of the year. I encourage you to go and play around with more of the variables and just have a look at how it actually impacts um, the indoor average temperature of your building based on the outdoor average temperature um, and use this as a resource throughout your tutorials to help your understanding of the various components that come together uh, for your building.